सी आई ई टी एन सी ई आर टी प्रेजेंट्स ऑडियो बुक हेल्थ एंड फिजिकल एजुकेशन द टेक्स्ट बुक फॉर क्लास नाइन्थ चैप्टर फाइव स्पोर्ट्स ट्रेनिंग फाइव पॉइंट सेवन प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ स्पोर्ट्स ट्रेनिंग इट इज इंपॉर्टेंट टू नो द बेसिक प्रिंसिपल्स दैट मस्ट बी रिफ्लेक्टेड इन स्पोर्ट्स ट्रेनिंग दीज आर नंबर वन कंटिन्यूटी ऑफ ट्रेनिंग which is the key to ensure the best outcome in a sport the training of the sports persons has to be continuous and regular hence too long a break in the training should be avoided and the condition of optimum load should be created number 2 increasing the training load there is a relationship between the load and adaptation process training load should be gradually increased to enable the body to adapt higher demands progressively number 3 active participation it is a well known fact that a player who is passively engaged in the training does not develop abilities and always remains totally dependent upon the coach or the physical education teacher and never develops confidence or improves performance capabilities therefore the teacher or coach must ensure that the sports persons participate in the training with conviction and sincerity number 4 planned and systematic training to achieve a high level of sports performance in competitions the training must be well planned and conducted in a systematic manner for better results number 5 general and specific training both general and specific training of a sports person are equally important because general training creates the base and specific training helps to achieve high performance general training leads to general conditioning of the body such as developing strength speed endurance flexibility agility balancing ability in general page number 50 General training is done by general exercising for the development of all the muscle group of the body whereas specific training consists of specific exercises with the aim to develop specific strength specific muscle group and specific motor abilities required for a particular sport number 7 clarity clarity with respect to all aspects of the concerned sport and games more importantly its techniques and tactics for performance enhancement is the key 7 cyclicity the training can be organized in three different cycles macro cycle having duration of 3 to 12 months meso cycle of 3 to 6 weeks and micro cycle of 5 to 10 days number 8 ensuring results sports training is planned to achieve the expected results in small and major competitions or tournaments number 9 critical training load the training load may be increased to meet the higher demands of competition in unforeseen situations the training load should be managed more than the general load this critical load should be measured four to five times in a year number 10 adaptability the adaptability to the training load should be in proper proportion between the load and recovery then only a sports person gets adapted to the training load number 11 uniformity and differentiation the uniformity may be in terms of time and duration of the activity whereas the load may vary as per the capacity of the individual sports person it is an established fact that no two individuals are alike the sports persons participating in the training are different in terms of age health condition individual capacity recovery pace and physique keeping these factors in view the training must be planned as per the needs of the individual sports person number 12 feasibility training of the sports person should be planned and conducted to draw the maximum benefit too little or too much training needs to be avoided now on the left side of the page 
we have box 5.2. It reads, Load is defined as the amount of work done by an individual's body. It is the psychological and physiological demand put on the body parts through motor stimuli resulting in improvement and maintenance of higher performance capacity. Now time for some activity. Activity number 5.2 Observe the sports training sessions planned and conducted by the coach or physical education teacher in your school. Write a brief report on the basis of your observations. Indicate whether all the principles of training are followed. Point out the missing ones, if any, in text. 5.8 Training Load As is evident from the above, in sports training, the load is a major concern. Efforts should be made so that possible work can be done with minimum effort. Load is defined as the amount of work done by an individual's body. It is the psychological and physiological demand put on the body parts through motor stimuli, resulting in improvement and maintenance of higher performance capacity. Sports training consists of physical exercises. Therefore, one needs to be aware of how much training load helps to stimulate various organs of the body so that the maximum benefits can be achieved. Page number 51 5.8.1 Overload. During training of sports persons, load is given to the players according to their capacity. Whenever this load goes beyond the capacity of an individual, the physiological and psychological functions get disturbed. Though this increased load does not affect the sports person immediately, if the administration of the overload continues for a longer period, it results in decrease of his or her performance. The important signs and symptoms of overload are Number 1. Fatigue Number 2. Decline in performance Number 3. Loss of interest in sports Number 4. Loss of concentration Number 5. Lack of motivation Number 6. Sleep disorder And Number 7. Loss of appetite Number 8. Prone to injuries 5.8.2 Adaptation Process and Training Load Adaptation is defined as the adjustment of physical and psychological functional systems to the training load. Adaptation to a load results in the enhancement of performance capacity. Thus, a sports person is able to increase his or her performance as a result of adaptation process. Adaptation process demands that a sports person maintains regularity in training. If a sports person is exposed to new and unfamiliar load in a systematic planned way, the adaptation process will be faster. Time for some activity. Activity number 5.3 Discuss individual experience of members of the team of your school who play either volleyball, cocoa, football or any other sport and who are trained by the physical education teacher or coach. Some discussion point could be A. What type of training method is being practiced? B. How the training load was increased? C. Did they feel that the increase in training load improved their performance? D. Did they feel comfortable with the increase in the training load? E. Did anyone get injuries because of the increase in the training load? If yes, what kinds of injuries they got? Note down their answers, prepare a report based on their answers and share the report in your class. Page number 52 Assessment Answer the following questions. Number 1. What is the meaning of sports training? Number 2. Why is it essential to train a sports person systematically? Number 3. List and explain the principles of sports training. Number 4. Explain the terms training load and adaptation. Number 5. Why a long break in sports training should be avoided? Number 6. What is the difference between interval training and cross training? Fill in the blanks.
नंबर वन स्पोर्ट्स ट्रेनिंग इज अ डैश प्रोसेस नंबर टू स्पोर्ट्स ट्रेनिंग एम्स एट हाई परफॉर्मेंस इन डैश नंबर थ्री अडेप्टेशन ऑफ द ट्रेनिंग लोड टेक्स प्लेस ओनली व्हेन द लोड इज डैश कंटिन्यूस प्रोसेस टिक मार्क इधर यस और नो नंबर वन Sports persons are trained on the basis of scientific principles. Number two, sports training does not help improve the sports performance. Number three, sports training requires systematic planning. Number four, learning of sports skills is the result of practice and experience. Number five, in sports training, coach or physical education teacher. does not have a prominent role you are just listening to this audio book narrator neeraj yadav technical coordinator bati langlingdo sound recordist vikas sangwan assistance in production ruchi sharma directed and produced by vimlesh choudhury this audio book is presented to you by cieet and cert new delhi india